guys, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. I know my background here is a little bit different, but just roll with me because I'm trying something new. I'm so glad you tuned in today to learn all about the commercial process from start to finish, from getting submitted for the commercial all the way to the callback and what happens after that. This is going to be a two-part video, so make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss the follow-up next week to this video. And also, last week's video is all about my tips on getting started in commercials, so in case you missed that, I will link it down below. All right, let's just get started on this video because it is a lot of information. So the very first thing that happens in the whole commercial process is the producer of the commercial or the client, which is the brand like, you know, McDonald's or Apple or whatever it may be, they contact the casting director and let them know what kind of actors they need for their commercial. So do they need like a female 20 to 30 aspirational or do they need like a 50 year old dad type who's very like scruffy and relatable. So then the casting director puts that description out onto the breakdowns and the breakdowns are on LA casting usually for commercials and sometimes they're on Actors Access. And there's a couple other ones like Casting Frontier and stuff. But then your agent goes onto those websites and goes through the breakdowns and looks for what clients they might have that match these breakdowns. So they submit your profile which shows your headshot and if you click on it it can show more pictures in your resume and stuff they submit that to the casting director the casting director gets thousands and thousands of submissions for every role they put out so they put that thing out in the morning by the afternoon they have like plenty of actors to choose from then the casting director goes through all those submissions picks who they want and then they call the agencies back and tell them the information of the audition and they tell them who they want to bring in obviously that's when you if you got picked you lucky duck you get that call from your agent or sometimes it comes in the form of an email or both and they let you know the date and the time of the audition the location what wardrobe is or what the look is that they're going for any dialogue that you might have and any other info that you might need most times the audition is the very next day. Some calls come in for later that day or like an hour from now. So you need to have like stuff in your car at all times, like makeup touch-ups or a couple different kinds of shoes, you know, uh, on hand at all times. But usually they're the next day or in two days. Now, like I said, you will usually get an email from your agent and it will have a link to your LA casting or Casting Frontier or whatever the site may be, you almost always need to log on to your profile and confirm your audition. Also, it, if you scan through that page, it'll give you all the info like what are the callback dates, what are the shoot dates, what are the wardrobe dates, so you can make sure you don't have any conflicts with those dates. And if you do, you must let your agent know. You can also look there for any dialogue that you have to memorize for the commercial and all kinds of good details but you have to confirm for your audition. So here it is, it's audition day. What's rule number one? You show up on time. Don't show up super early because they sometimes do things in categories, like they'll see all the men first or all the kids first and then all the women. Or show up within a reasonable time of your audition and if you're going to be late, make sure you call and let your agent know so that they can pass that info on to the casting director. You don't wanna show up at you know 45 minutes after your audition and they've already ended the session and you're SOL. Also good to know that most casting offices take their lunch break between 1 and 2 o'clock. So if your audition is at 1245 and you show up at 115, so you show up to the audition, you come ready to go. Obviously there's always a bathroom there if you need to touch up or if you need to change your clothes. Um, a lot of times like if I'm supposed to wear high heels in the audition, I will wear flip-flops there and then change into my shoes once I get there. Oh, parking. I'm talking about LA. I know that there's a lot of different, you know, cities that watch these videos, but I'm talking about LA, be careful with parking. You never know how long you're gonna be in that audition. It could be literally four minutes and it could be an hour and a half. So make sure that you find a spot that if your car is there and it's like almost your turn to go in the room, you're not gonna have to go move your car and or pay your meter or whatever. Make sure you find a good spot and read all the parking signs so that you don't get a ticket and you can be parked there for a long time. So you walk into the casting building and most of these casting offices are in buildings that they share with other commercial casting directors. So there's a lot of different commercials casting at the same time. So you go in and you find out which you know studio within that building that your commercial is casting in. So you find the sign in sheet, you put your name, your agency, um, male or female, uh, sometimes they'll ask what role you're reading for and your time in and your audition time. 
So you sign in and then you just take a seat and hang out and someone will come out, either the casting director or an assistant, and they will check out that casting sheet. Sometimes they will pair you up, like if it's you know a commercial that has two people in it, they'll pair you up with people, but they go through that list and they're the ones calling people in. Just know that they always, almost always, go by sign-in time. So if you show up, you know, an hour early for your audition, um, and you kind of feel like you should be seen right away, but there's 30 people ahead of you, most often they do call people into the room in the order of the sign-in sheet. Oh, if you do get paired up with somebody and you guys are gonna be going in together, talk to them, get to know them, build a little chemistry or relationship with them as quickly as you can, and obviously if there's dialogue, run that so that you guys you know, are a little bit polished before you get in the room and do it in front of the camera. Usually right on the wall above the sign-in sheet, there's a piece of paper that tells you, again, all the dates of the callbacks, the shoot. You need to really look at those dates and make sure that you let your agent know if there's any way that you can't make any of those dates. And also they'll usually have a board, which is a description of the commercial. So it's like, you know, the idea of exactly how this thing is gonna play out and it has like sketches and it has the dialogue and everything so you can really see what they're going for. Make sure you read any information that you can so that when you get in there, you know what they're talking about and you have a really good idea of what they're expecting. Most times there is a group explanation. So you're out there, you're waiting, and the casting director will come out and say, okay, everybody in the room for a group explanation. And the casting director will fully describe exactly what's gonna happen in the audition so that you have an idea. They do this a lot when there's a lot of people waiting so they don't have to explain it every single time. But you get in there and this is a good time that, uh, to ask a question if you really don't understand what they're talking about. And then you go back out to the waiting room and then they call people in again. Then it is your turn to go in. It's your turn to audition. Unlike theatrical auditions where I say leave your bag out in the waiting room, it's okay to bring your bag or whatever in with you to the audition room in commercials and you just set it down. Usually there's like a table or the floor or whatever right near the door. Just set your stuff down and then go straight to your mark. There's the camera set up where the casting director is, and then there's always like a little mark or something somewhere in front of that, that you'll go find your mark and stand there. If you don't see it, just ask them where to go. As far as the number of people in the room on a first audition, almost always it's just one person. It is just the person running the camera who is the casting director or an assistant. Basically, they run the whole thing. So you walk in, you stand on your mark, they ask you to slate, which is when you're going to be saying your name and uh, sometimes your height and then they will have you turn to the each side to the right and left so you show both sides of your face sometimes the slate includes like doing a full circle and they might ask you a couple questions just to get a feel for your personality sometimes they just want you to say your name in the slate so that one person will be doing this whole thing with you oh and right before the slate usually they take a still photo of you so just know that they'll be like, okay, nice smile, and you'll give a nice smile, and then they take your photo, and then they press record, and then they ask you for a slate. And then it's time for the audition. You're gonna just do whatever they told you to do in the group explanation, or whatever they told you just now. There's so many different kinds of commercial auditions. Sometimes they just interview you to get a feel of your personality and how, you, how your expressions are in your face. Sometimes it's dialogue, sometimes it's like a lot of dialogue straight to the camera. If there's a lot of talking and dialogue and lines for you to memorize, they almost always have a big board right next to the camera so that if you lose it, you can look and it's right there. But yeah, so many different kinds of commercials. Sometimes they'll be like, if it's a commercial where there's a lot of different stuff happening, they'll do like miniature versions of those things. Like if you're supposed to be, you know, playing baseball, they'll have like, you know, like a fake baseball bat and, or if you're supposed to be drinking iced tea, they'll give you a paper cup and, you know, they, they'll just have you do like pretend versions of what will be happening in the commercial just so they can see what you look like when you're doing these things. Sometimes it's a food product and you have to like eat something. Usually if it's a burger commercial or something, they just have you have like a piece of bread and you eat that. And, mm. You know those commercials where the women are eating a piece of chocolate and it, like the caramel, like, I've never gotten called in for one of those. Come on, let me eat some chocolate, call me in. All right, so you do your audition and then they may or may not have you do it one or two more times. Sometimes you do it and they're like, great. They might only have you do it once because A, they know you're just not right for it or B, you nailed it and that's it. They might have you do it another time just to get like something else out of you, who knows. But either way, don't worry about it. Your job is done, you've done a good job and you can leave the room. As I always say, get your stuff and leave. Don't, I wish I could take my own advice. I always say something stupid like, happy Tuesday when I leave the room and I'm leaving and I'm like, oh, 
why are you talking? Shut up. So there you have it guys. That is the full description of what happens in the audition process from, you know, submission to your first audition. Next week I will talk about what happens at the callback and beyond. So I will see you next time. Bye guys.